We want to welcome you to the Wednesday night hour of power right here at Liberty Baptist Church. And uh, I just created that, but uh, it really is the power of God is here because the Word of God is here. Can I hear an amen? Amen. 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 Let's stand together as we sing our opening chorus and then work for the night is coming. We need to be working for the Lord Jesus Christ. We do a lot of things for the temporary, don't we? We mow our lawns, we should. We wash our car, we should. All right, amen. We do our dishes, we should. But we, we need to give the gospel, amen. We should, amen. Let's work for the Lord Jesus Christ as he's coming soon. It could be tonight. Let's, let's, let's sing our opening chorus. Would you sing that with me? Fifty-seven. I was talking with someone today that was just saying, you know, she, this lady said, I just, I just make sure that I'm a witness for Jesus Christ, even with my smile, she said. And uh, I said, well, that's wonderful. Amen. Amen. And she said, you know what I find? People ask me, why are you smiling? And then I got a reason to tell them. Isn't that good? I'll tell you what, that's a tough thing to do. Have you ever look at yourself when you're not ready? You're usually not smiling. Isn't that the truth? You look at yourself and you're not ready to see yourself and you say, man, I'm not, I'm not a very happy looking person right now. <laughs> that's why you, you want to cover all those mirrors, right? Because you don't want to see what you really look like. But, you know, uh, the song here says, work for the night is coming. And some of our work is just letting the Lord Jesus shine through us. Amen. Let's sing it together. Number 457. Work for the night is coming. Work through the morning hours. Work while the dew is sparkling. Work with springing flowers. Work when the day grows brighter. Work in the glowing sun. Work for the night is coming. tonight. They did deliver the one refrigerator. That, they brought both of them, but the freezer was damaged, so they had to send it back. But you need to take a peek out there in the kitchen before you leave tonight. That thing is massive. You could almost live inside that refrigerator. I mean, it is massive, but uh, it's beautiful, and uh, we're still we have about $700 given for the ranges and the microwaves if you'd like to help out with that <clears throat> because uh, the goal is $2,060. So if you'd like to help with that, then that could be a, a great blessing. But you go out there and you might be inspired when you see uh, that refrigerator out there. It's, uh, it's something to behold. So uh, let me just encourage you to do that before or at the end of the service tonight. <clears throat> the um, seniors lunch still uh, we don't have very many people signed up for that and uh, that'll be uh, that's coming right up so you need to sign up for that dozen doors on Saturday and uh, 
So I hope that you'll mark those things down. And boy, lots of stuff coming up soon here at Liberty Baptist Church. I have uh, a letter from Brother Harris in Belize and a uh, missionary there. And he talks about things happening. Uh, in the month of May, they had a youth rally. So they had over 70 come to that. They had a big ladies banquet, the number of ladies coming for that. And uh, they're outgrowing their facilities there. And so continue to pray for those folks. That guy's a real soul winner there. And uh, I pray for that ministry to go on. Brother Ajabing also sent a note. Remember they were building that new building for uh, their college and they had the first four floor finished and uh, <clears throat> they're gonna be running, actually in August they're gonna be starting the school. They'll be uh, running the school and you know what, uh, Joseph, it's called Landmark Baptist College, that's what it's called. And Day Spring College, but uh, they're in Ghana and uh, they did have something tragic happen. Someone broke into their building into their church office, into their church building and stole just a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, mixer boxes, amplifiers, keyboards, um, laptops, just a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, so they're asking for prayer. But they have the first floor done and so I guess they can go ahead and meet in there and then they're working on the second floor, Brother Adjabing. And he actually graduated from, I don't know if you knew him, he went to Landmark Baptist College, but anyway, they're going to start this school in uh, this next month, and, uh, and so continue to pray for him, if you would. Then, uh, in your Bible, Luke uh, chapter 12, and beginning with verse number 22, the Bible talks about uh, this matter of, of seeking the kingdom of God first. And he starts off in verse number 22 of Luke chapter 12. And of course, Jesus is speaking to his disciples. And he said unto his disciples, Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat, neither for the body, what you shall put on. The life is more than meat, and the body is more than raiment. Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap which neither have storehouse nor barn, and God feedeth them. How much more are ye better than the fowls? And which of you, with taking thought, can add to his stature one cubit? If ye then be not able to do that thing which is least, why take ye thought for the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow, they toil not, neither... and. Uh, Toil not, they spend not, and yet I say unto you that Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. If then God so clothed the grass which is today in the field and tomorrow is cast into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O ye of little faith? And seek not ye what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, neither be ye of doubtful mind. For all these things do the nations of the world seek after and your father knoweth that ye have need of these things. But verse number 31, But rather seek ye the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. In other words, we put the Lord first, amen? amen. And God will provide for our needs. Ushers, why don't you come to receive the offering today? Let's bow our heads, ask God to bless in the offering tonight. Dear Lord, we're praying for your blessing to be upon the offering tonight. Father, we pray that you would bring in uh, touch the hearts of our people that we might bring in the rest of the money to order those stoves and microwaves so we can complete that job there in the kitchen. I know, Father, that you've already touched the hearts. I pray that we'd be willing to do that, which you would have us to do. Thank you for the good offering on Sunday. Pray that you'll bless this offering tonight. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
Amen. Let me invite you to stand again with your hymnals, number 265. Number 265, Redeemed, How I Love to Proclaim It. What a great song. We'll sing this song and then we'll greet each other. Redeemed, how I love to proclaim it. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed through His infinite mercy. His child and forever. second verse there that's the chorus so we'll go one more page there there we go redeemed and so happy in jesus join me on that would you redeemed and so happy in jesus no language my rapture can tell i know that the light of his presence with me doth continually dwell redeemed 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 by the blood of the lamb Bible says in Psalm 107, verse 2, Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Are you redeemed from the hand of the enemy? Amen. Amen. So I want you to tell at least three people, just say, I'm redeemed. Amen. Let's greet each other tonight. can remember where you started tonight you gotta retrace your steps and go back to where you started we'll uh, sing number 247 more love to thee O Christ more love to thee we just we cannot out love the Lord amen 
I mean, he loves us in all of our unworthiness. We're so unlovely, and yet he loves us and gave his life for us. For God so loved the world, amen. But let's give as much love as we can back to the Lord. Think about him and all that he's done for you and all that he means to you as you sing. Number 247, just before Martha comes to sing tonight, we'll sing more love to thee. Take your Bible, turn to Revelation chapter 5 with me tonight. Revelation chapter 5. Glad that my daughter Darcy is here with two of our little, two of our little munchkins. Gus is in uh, Georgia, and so he'll be coming, driving in. Sometime, Darcy, did you know what time he's, when is he coming, do you think? Okay. I may uh, need some help to, uh, are we going to unload those things tomorrow or wait till Friday? I don't know if anybody could help. If anybody would like to help us unload that, Donna has graciously allowed us to put some of this, put that stuff over to her place. And uh, 
We appreciate that very much. I think there's at least 50 boxes and a, f and a few other things there. I don't know if anybody could help me. Gus and his dad. Unload that stuff. Just give me a, a just tell me that you if you can help us. Give me your number and uh, we'll, we'll figure it out. Revelation chapter 5, verses 13 and 14. <clears throat> Let you remain seated there as I read those two verses. The Bible says, And every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth, and such as are in the sea and all that are in them, heard I saying, Blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. And the four beasts said, Amen. And the four and twenty elders fell down and worshipped him that liveth forever and ever. Hmm. The day is coming when praise will break out in the universe for Christ, amen? The day is coming where praise will break out in the universe for Christ. That's what we're going to look at tonight, part three. Let's bow in prayer. Father, we thank you for the word of God. We pray, Father, that you would help us to be a people that praises. Help us to praise you. You are praiseworthy. Help us to praise you. The Bible tells us here that there's a day coming when the whole universe will praise. We look forward to that day. But I pray, Father, that we would spend more time praising you even now. Bless the preaching of the word of God, and I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Years ago, a preacher had a horse, and he trained this horse by using religious words. Rather than saying, giddy up to the horse to make it go, you would say, praise the Lord. And then to stop the horse, rather than say, whoa, he would say, amen, and the horse would stop. So to get it to go, he would say, praise the Lord. To get it to stop, he would say, amen. That was a religious horse. A number of years went by, and he decided he's going to sell that horse. A man came by and looked the horse over, and he said, that looks like a good horse. And he said, it is a good horse. But he said, one thing, I taught this horse to, uh, to respond to religious commands. It's different from any other horse. He said, to make this horse go, you say, praise the Lord. To stop this horse, you say, amen. The man said, that's the silliest thing I've ever heard in my life. He said, I've been riding horses my whole life. I've never heard anything like that. He said, you watch this. And he jumped up on that horse and he kicked it in the ribs and that horse took off running. And it was running fast. It run faster and faster and faster and faster. And he looked up. And there's a canyon out, of, out in the front. And he's running right for that canyon. And uh, he said, whoa, horse, whoa. And that horse just kept running. He couldn't get that horse to stop. He said, what was that religious word? What was that religious word? Finally, he remembered and he said, amen. And that horse stopped right on the edge of the canyon. He goes, praise the Lord. The day is coming when the universe will break out in praise for the Lord. Amen. The day is coming when the universe will break out in praise for the Lord. <laughs> We've looked at 
the two waves of praise that the Bible talks about. And tonight we'll look at the third wave of praise. This is during the tribulation period. That the whole universe is going to praise the Lord. The first wave of praise was with the four living creatures that are called the four beasts. The cherubim angels. They're part of the first wave along with the 24 elders that represent the New Testament Christians. <coughs> the second wave we looked at last week, that's the angels. And they're numberless. 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. Lots of angels. <laughs> they're going to praise the Lord. Then we come to the third wave and that's what we're looking at tonight. All the creatures in heaven and earth and under the earth, the Bible says, and in the sea, are going to praise the Lord. The day is coming when praise will break out everywhere in the universe. It will break out. Why is it going to break out? Because God has the seven-sealed book or scroll in his right hand, and he's going to hand that book to Christ and Christ is going to take that book and he's going to open that book. And as he opens the seals in that book, then judgment's going to be poured out upon this earth. But you know, it's a symbol of the final redemption of mankind. Amen. Finally, finally, it will be here. And all of the world, all of the universe will praise Christ. Now, that's what we're looking at tonight. Now, notice Several things. First of all, notice the creatures of the praise. The creatures of the praise. Look at verse 13, the first part of verse 13 and verse 14. And every creature which is in heaven, the Bible says, every creature which is in heaven and on earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea, and all that are in them. And verse 14, And the four beasts said, Amen. And the four and twenty elders fell down and worshipped him that liveth forever and ever. So, the creatures of the praise. The day is coming when praise will break out everywhere in the universe. We see the creatures of the praise. Now look what it says. Every creature which is in heaven. Now, what would that include? That would include all the saints who have died and they're in heaven. All the saints that are in heaven. The angels are in heaven. The saints are in heaven. Then it says, and on earth. That would include all those who are alive on the earth are going to praise the Lord. All those in heaven will praise the Lord. All those on the earth are going to praise the Lord. And then notice it says, under the earth. That's referring, I believe, to those who have died without Christ. Those that are in hell will even praise the Lord. Those in heaven, because he already talked about those in heaven. Those on the earth, those under the earth. Under the earth is... Speaking, I believe, of hell, those who have died and have not gone to heaven, and those who are, and then all the creatures in the sea, all of the creatures in heaven, on the earth, and under the earth, and in the sea are going to praise the Lord. <laughs> Finally, they will praise the Lord. Then the Bible says, the living creatures, they're going to shout, what? What are they going to shout? Amen. It says it right there. Amen. They're going to shout amen. The living creatures, the cherubim, angels are around the throne of God. They're going to shout amen. And then the 24 elders, which represent the New Testament Christians, that's us. What are we going to do? We're going to fall down and worship Christ. That's what the Bible says. Wow. Wow. That's something. Christ deserves that praise. We're going to give him that praise. He deserves it all. Sometimes we just hold back. 
Sometimes we just hold back rather than praise the Lord. Have you? I'm not going to ask you to raise your hands, but sometimes you just hold back. I can even see it sometimes. You're sitting there and you're ready. You just hold back. You just hold back. We should just praise the Lord. Amen. And that day we're going to just praise the Lord. <laughs> we might as well just go ahead and do it. <laughs> I think of the story. Sometimes we just can hardly keep from telling the Lord. You know what? <laughs> we ought to just say amen. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with it. I, I always think of the story of the husband and wife, the farmer and his wife. They were sitting on the front porch and the husband... The old farmer is thinking about his wife and how wonderful she has been. They've been married for 42 years, 42 years. He's sitting there thinking how wonderful his wife is. What a helpmate she's been to him through thick and through thin, through good times and bad times. He's thinking about her and, and how much he appreciates her. And finally he turns to his wife and he says, Honey, you've been so wonderful. You've been so wonderful. Sometimes... I can hardly keep from telling you. <laughs> you know what? We just need to tell them, amen? Yes. Just need to tell the Lord. The creatures of the praise. I thought, this is something. The creatures of the praise. Of the praise. All the creatures. And I thought, and I was thinking about it this morning. God can do that, can he? God can do it, and he will. The day is coming when praise will break out everywhere in the universe for Christ. Number two, we see the creatures of the praise, the chorus of the praise. Look at verse 13, the second part of the verse. Heard I saying, blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever. So what is the chorus? Blessing and honor, and glory, and power unto the Lord. <laughs> that is the chorus. It's endless. It's eternal. Praising the Lord for the eminent redemption that will be ours. In Romans chapter 8, in verses 19 through 22, the Bible says, For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willing, but by reason of him who hath sub subjected the same in hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption and to the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. Glory, we see blessing and honor, and glory and power unto the Lord. When I was a kid, there were special days every year that I looked forward to. Probably you did the same thing. Maybe not, I don't know. I may have been unusual, but I had them all marked down through the year. The first big occasion in the new year, the first big thing that I looked forward to was a very special day. It was my birthday in February. That was a big day. I always look forward to that. It was a special day. And uh, everyone would honor me in that family on that day. I always look forward to that. Then the next big day I would look forward to was summer vacation when school was out I celebrated then the next day I would look forward to the 4th of July because we would shoot fireworks off my uncle he would always make fireworks and blow things up and that was always fun probably shouldn't say it but he would make his own fireworks out of old hoses <laughs> And he would blow things up, and we were allowed to watch. <laughs> Don't blow your fingers off, you know. Then, 
the next the big holiday I would look forward to would be Thanksgiving. I just loved Thanksgiving. It was my favorite time. We could eat and eat and eat. Then we would just lay on the floor for an hour or two, you know. <laughs> my mother would just make everything. They never said that you could to stop eating. They would just let us eat, you know what? And uh, pies and cakes and everything that you could dream about was there. And uh, our family would come together. And my grandmother, she would always make those. You know, my grandmother, she would make... Did you ever have lady slippers? Anybody ever have those lady slippers? No one here. Wow. Did you have them? There's a special talent to making those things. But those things were something. Anyway, I mean, they, everybody would bring their special foods. You know what? Then, of course, I would look forward to Christmas time. That was always a great time. But I had those special days. And that was my calendar. Those are the things I would always look forward to the whole year. Do you know what? As Christians, we ought to be looking forward to the coming of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Every single day. That's very special. That is very special. All the joy that we have in the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, the blessing. I like that. Don't you, don't you like the, the chorus here? Blessing and honor and glory and power unto him that sitteth on the throne and to the Lamb forevermore. I was reading a story about a British officer who is in uh, Belgium. He was a Christian. And while he's there in Belgium, he met this Christian man who had been part of the Brahmins. And he had been converted, come to Christ. And as a result of that, he was under heavy persecution because he had converted to Jesus Christ. And they, the government took his home away from him. All of his friends uh, left him and would have nothing to do with him. Even family would have nothing to do with him. They took everything that he owned and he was left with nothing. And this British officer who was a Christian asked him this question. He said, are you able to bear up under your trouble? He said, are you able to bear up under your trouble? And this is what that man said. He said, why does everyone ask me that question? Am I able to bear up under my trouble? He said, nobody ever asked me the question, are you able to bear up under your joy? He said, since I was saved, he said, I, was, I have all my sins forgiven. I have the gift of eternal life. I have a home in heaven. I have the peace that passes all understanding. I have real joy. He said, nobody ever asked me, are you able to bear up under the joy? <laughs> Praise the Lord for the joy that God gives to us. Amen. Amen. What joy he gives to us. The day is coming when praise will break out everywhere in the universe for Christ. And then one more thing, the characters of the praise. Look at verse 13, the last part of verse 13. Be it unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. The characters of the praise are God the Father that sits upon the throne and Jesus Christ who is the Lamb of God. Amen. They are the characters of the praise. They are the ones who will be praised. God the Father and God the Son, Jesus Christ. Notice it's not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not praised. The Holy Spirit is the one who inspires us to praise. Amen? We're not to give praise to the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God is the one that helps us to give praise unto God the Father and God the Son. The Bible says in John chapter 4, verses 23 and 24, But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Philippians 3.3 3, For we are the circumcision which worship God in the spirit, and rejoice in Jesus Christ and have no confidence in the flesh. The Holy Spirit helps us to worship God. I think that when we're 
filled with the Spirit of God, when we've yielded ourselves to the Spirit of God, and we're filled with the Spirit of God, He will help us to worship God the Father and God the Son. Don't you believe that? I believe so. I believe so. So we have here the Trinity. God the Father is seated upon the throne. He's got the seven-sealed book, the title deed to all creation in his right hand. He's going to hand that to Christ. Then we have God the Son, who is the worthy one. He's the only one who is worthy to open the book. And as he opens that book, God's judgments are going to be poured out upon this earth during the tribulation period. Then we have God the Holy Spirit in all his fullness. He's searching the earth for the unrepentant sinners to be judged. In Revelation chapter 4 and verse 5, the Bible says, And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices, and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Speaks of the Holy Spirit and His completeness, His fullness. Then there in Revelation chapter 5 and verse 6, And I beheld, and lo, the midst of the throne... And of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood the lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. And then John chapter 16 and verse 8 speaks of the Holy Spirit reproving the world. The Bible says, and when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Our praise should be directed towards God the Father and God the Son, not towards the Holy Spirit, but be towards God the Father and God the Son. Sometimes we come to church and we say, wow, it's a great message. We ought to praise the Lord. God really spoke to our hearts. Amen. God really gave us a great message. You hear great singing. Boy, God was honored there tonight, wasn't he? By the singing and by the praises and by the piano play. Praise the Lord for those things. Amen. Praise the Lord. God is the one that is to be worshipped. He is a great God. Probably you've heard this name a few years ago. It wasn't as popular as it is now. A fellow by the name of Nikola Tesla. Tom, you know that name, don't you? Tesla become very popular today. Do you know he was a scientist? He invented the method of generating electricity and they call it an alternating current. That's what he was famous for. Of course, Alexander Graham Bell is probably more famous than Tesla, but Tesla, they say, was a brilliant man. He was a, a genius. And was interesting, a story I was reading about him. He would sit on his sofa and he was looking out. He would look out the window when it was storming. And they said that when it would begin to lightning, he would applaud. <laughs> Here's a genius applauding God, the greatest, amen. <laughs> greatest genius in all of the world. But he would applaud God because he understood electricity. He was applauding God. What a great God we have. He deserves all the praise and all the glory and all the honor that we can give unto him. I don't know how many baseball fans we have here tonight. How many ever watch baseball? Know a little bit about baseball? Anybody? A few of you do. Remember the name Oral Hershiser? Oral Hershiser. 1988 season was his greatest season. He played for the L.A. Dodgers. Started off great that year in August. He had a full game. He, play, he uh, had a full game in August and a no-hitter. A full game and no-hitter. A complete game, I should say. It's very rare for pitchers to, pee, uh, to pitch a complete game. But that year, he pitched five complete games. 
five complete games for the Dodgers at the end of the season. He also had a earn run average of 59 consecutive innings without an earned hit. 59. That's a lot. 59 consecutive innings without an earned run. Of course, they went to the National League uh, championship game. They were playing against the New York Mets. And uh, he had just tremendous games. It's un unheard of, but against, in that, in that series, he pitched 20 more than 24 innings. After pitching for the season, 24 innings. And the final game to put the Mets out was a complete game with no hits. <laughs> a no hit, complete game to put them out and to win the National League. They went on to the World Series. And they were playing against the Athletic A's. Oakland Athletics, I should say. And they beat them in five games. Now, Oral Hershiser won the Cy Young Award, given to the best pitcher. And then he won two MVPs. One for the National League championship game and one for the World Series game. Unbelievable for anyone to get that. You say, why are you saying all this? I'm getting to it. <laughs> Between innings, the cameras were following him around. I, I remember watching. The cameras were watching him in the dugout. And while he was in the dugout, he was singing something. And they couldn't make out what he was singing. After he won the World Series, it was... A, one of the things that they did, they would go on The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson. And so he went on The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson after they won the World Series. And the first thing that Johnny Carson asked him was, everyone wants to know, what were you singing in the dugout? And he said, no, I don't want to. I don't want to say. They said, no, we want to know, what were you singing? And all of the audience began to applaud and they said we want to know we want to know what were you singing and so Oral Hirschheiger Heiser with embarrassed reluctance began to sing what he was singing in the dugout and this is what he sang praise God from whom all blessings flow praise him all creatures here below Praise him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. He is praising the Lord. We ought to praise the Lord. Amen. I think to myself, that's probably the first time they ever had that song sung on Johnny Carson's show. <laughs> but he is praising the Lord. We ought to praise the Lord. Amen. The day is coming, the Bible tells us, when praise will break out everywhere in the universe for Christ. We're going to be in that number, aren't we? Let's bow our heads. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Every head bowed, every eye closed tonight. Are you living a life of praise? Are you living a life of praise unto the Lord? You know, we're going to. Sometimes we hold it back from praising the Lord. You know what? I, I like what old Hershiser did. He is praising the Lord right there in the dugout. All the cameras were watching him. We shouldn't be ashamed. We shouldn't be afraid. You say, you know what, Pastor? I want to live a life of praise unto the Lord. I want to live a life of praise. Would you pray for me that I could live a life of praise unto the Lord?
Would you pray for me today? Slip your hands up all through the building. Would you pray for, pray for me? I want to live that life of praise. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I think to myself, would I have sung that song on national TV? <laughs> well, he did. Let's praise the Lord. Let's live a life of praise. Let's not be afraid to praise the Lord, no matter where we're at. If you don't know Christ as your Savior, then you really have nothing to praise the Lord for. You need, except the fact that God has kept you along, alive this long, and without Christ, my friend, you're lost. You can trust in Jesus Christ as your Savior, even tonight. You can pray a simple prayer. Trust Christ as your Savior, and he will save you. He will give you the gift of eternal life. You can pray a prayer like this, dear Lord, I know I'm a sinner that I can't save myself. I know that you died, were buried, and rose again to save me from my sin. I'm trusting you this moment to save me and give me the gift of eternal life. You know, he promises to save you. We're going to have the invitation in just a moment. When we have the invitation, God has spoken to your heart. Maybe you just want to come and come to this altar tonight and just praise the Lord for his goodness to you. Sometimes we hold it back, don't we? We hold it back when we ought to be praising the Lord. God has blessed you. God has been so good to you. And you hold it back. Let's, let's start praising the Lord. Let's not hold it back. Let's not be afraid to come and thank him for what he's done. His goodness to us. His blessings to us. Yeah. Blessing and honor and glory and power unto the Lord. Why don't you come tonight? I'm going to have a word of prayer. God spoke into your heart tonight. Dear Lord, thank you for speaking to our hearts tonight. Dear Lord, many people tonight said, I want to live a life of praise. Father, help us to. I like the example. Laurel Hershiser, Father, he wasn't ashamed to praise you, even while he was there in the dugout. Father, help us not to be ashamed. Help us to live a life of praise. Help us not to hold it back. Sometimes we just hold it back. Father, help us not to hold it back. Help us just to praise you. Now, bless in this invitation. If there are other decisions that need to be made, I pray they would make them tonight. May they come. Bless in this invitation, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand to our feet. God spoke into your heart tonight. Why don't you come? God's already spoke to your heart. Why don't you come tonight? We can come and praise the Lord here. Why don't you do that tonight? Hey, Steve. Steve. Joseph here is going to join the church, brother. You want to fill the card out for him? He's going to fill the card out for you. It's not too late. You can still come.